Well, you guys got another video here for you now any actions you take on this information you find in this video of mine is strictly done at your own risk we're going to be taking control of your privacy in windows this is going to be windows 11 the app is called this is win 11 and you can take a look at it in this video i'll show you basically what it can actually do now this is a very powerful uh, tool or script and it's going to be able to remove a lot of telemetry and a lot of unwanted bloat inside Windows 11. You can also install apps and do a bunch of other stuff as you'll see in this video. So let's first extract it to the desktop. And once we get this onto the desktop, we'll be able to run it as administrator. Now it is completely free to use. Now, if you've got privacy concerns with Windows 11, then this tool will take care of it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna open this up and run this as administrator here and say yes to the user account control and this will open up the application now there's been quite a few updates on this since the last time i've seen this application so we'll go through some of the uh, updates here and some of the changes so we need to do here is pretty straightforward stuff you just need to go onto the side menu and we can use this along here it does allow you to create a restore point and it also allows you to restore all of the settings that you change here but I would always advise you to be very careful at what you're actually check marking here because some of these uh, settings can break things. If you want to use them, it will remove them or disable them. So just make sure you know what you're doing. Now, if you leave all the check marks in by leaving the tick mark in the Win11 build or whatever build you're using up the top there, it's going to put all of the settings by default that you've check marked here. I prefer to uncheck mark that and go through my own settings here. So you can see enable Windows 10 file explorer, create a restore point, uh, show hidden files, folders and drives in file explorer, show hidden file names in extensions. And there's a bunch of other stuff here like your taskbar and start menu settings, which you can mess around with. So if you like to align it to the left or you like to align it in another position here, you can check mark all this, hide the search icon and things like that. I'm gonna leave this area as is again under the desktop section here you can use apps in dark theme you can use the dark theme as well and also there's some other uh, areas here which we can mess around with like disable snap assistant disable widgets uninstall widgets and also enable the stickers now don't just check mark what i'm check marking here you want to go through the whole list and make sure these settings are going to be exactly what you want with your particular install. Otherwise you can end up removing stuff that you might need that I don't need. So you can see here, remove fax printer, remove XPS document writer, and also we have a bunch of other things here. So remove the Windows 11 system requirements. Watermark is added there. Also you can enable the Microsoft Windows subsystem for Linux, and also install the Microsoft Windows subsystem for Android. These are two very powerful um, utilities which we can use to use Linux based stuff and also Android based stuff inside Windows. You can enable Microsoft Hyper V and you could disable Microsoft Teams in startup. Moving on to the paranoid section, as you can see, run disk cleanup and also block Windows telemetry with Windows Spy Blocker. We also have Automate ONO Shut Up 10. Plus plus. This means this does work on Windows 11 as well, and this will automatically go through and uh, install this and remove all of that telemetry. Windows updates, uninstall broken Windows updates, which are known uh, on the list, so it will remove those. And under the gaming section, you can see there's a bunch of other gaming tweaks here. Disable game DVR feature, and they disable uh, power throttling as well. Adjust visual effects for best performance. Privacy in the privacy section, you can go through here and check mark what you like. And this will give you a long list of all the usual suspects, which is collecting data, like diagnostic data, connected user experience and telemetry, compatibility telemetry, uh, locating tracking ID for advertising, relevant ads, feedback notifications, suggested contents in settings app, Windows Hello Biometrics, also a bunch of other stuff inside here. Also, we have the app permissions, which you can disable here as well. 
there's app notifications, access to your camera and microphone. I'm going to leave those two alone because people might need those. I'm not sure if that's going to mess around with the camera or microphone if you're using a webcam or microphone. But generally, all the other stuff is just bloat and you could just remove all of this. This is the beauty of this particular app and script. If you don't use all of the features, there's going to be some in here which is going to speed up and save you time. And that is the reason why this can be very useful for people that are installed in Windows on a regular basis and maybe doing it on loads of different machines. So who is this tool for? Well, I suppose it's for the paranoid person that just doesn't like to be tracked or monitored or have data collected on them while they're using their Windows operating system. Or there's the people that just want to remove certain privacy features that they don't use or applications and things like that that has been installed onto the operating system and they could just use this to remove it. It's also going to be for gamers who just want a very minimalistic sort of install and they don't need all of this bloat running in the background while they're gaming and they will use something like this to literally remove all of this stuff and have just a bare bones system so they could just play their games without having all of the other bloat running in the background and hogging up all their system resources and causing uh, frame drops and things like that. So there's many reasons why people would use this particular app. So what I actually use on my system, well, I've got a little batch file that will remove all of the privacy settings and enable all the networking that I need and then basically uninstall a bunch of pre-installed apps that I don't use. And that is pretty much it. I don't generally worry about the telemetry side of things. I mean, if you're that worried about telemetry, maybe you shouldn't be using the operating system at all, or maybe you shouldn't be uh, using the internet. So you can see here, it's going to allow us to remove all of the pre-installed apps here. And if you wanted to remove them all, you could just remove all, and it will basically move them all over to the right-hand side, which will then remove them from the system. If you want to just remove a few, then you can do. If you want to unremove something here and move it back over to the installed section and it will leave that application installed on the system. Remember, just check what you're removing because it's going to remove stuff that you might need later on. For instance, the Windows Microsoft Store and other things like that. So bear that in mind. Just be careful what you're removing. If you want Microsoft Paint, then don't remove it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Once you've made your selection, you can go ahead and then click on remove and it will remove all these from your system. And this is basically a lot of the bloat that people complain about where Microsoft are forcing all of this onto you rather than giving you the option to install it or remove it or just toggle out or opt out of these settings. So this is a concern that a lot of people have. And I can understand that because it does wind me up as well when Microsoft fill stuff up on their operating system with a load of things that I don't really need and I have to go through and remove a lot of it. So that's a common problem with Microsoft. Now, also another useful feature of this uh, application is it allows you to download and install apps through the Windows Packet Manager. You can see here, there's a bunch of different areas which you can go into and check mark, for instance, GIMP, whether it be uh, ShareX or something like that that you want to install. If you use these types of programs, you can go ahead and check mark them and it will download them and install them onto your system view, which makes things super quick and easy. So you've got productivity section, you've got network, you've got mail clients, gaming, frameworks. You've got a load of areas here which you can go into and check mark a bunch of these uh, software to get them installed on the system. There's Malwarebytes, there's KeyPass, Discord, uh, bleach bit for system, C cleaner, a bunch of usual stuff like Rufus, start all back. This is a paid program. You will need to buy a license for this, but it will change your start menu, which I think is an essential part if you're using Windows 11 as of right now, because the start menu is absolute garbage. And if you want to make it more usable, then use something like start all back. It just makes Windows 11 much more usable it makes the taskbar more usable. It makes the context menu usable. It makes the start menu usable. It just does so much more that Windows 11 should be doing, but they're just ignoring it. And basically you can end up with a system that takes you to do five or six clicks to go to a location, whereas it used to only take two clicks. And now they want you to go through all their subsystem menus to get to that location. This makes it a lot more easier. 
So let's go ahead and get these installed on the system. It does take a bit of time, but once it's all done, you should have all these installed on your PC. Okay, so let's quickly go to the last section, which is automate tasks with the Power UI. Now, another thing I want to cover here is people using Windows 11 on older systems, maybe unsupported hardware, and people may be saying that it's really hogging all of their system resources and things like that. Well, you shouldn't be really using Windows 11 on unsupported hardware if that is the case. And maybe your computer is just too old. And by de-bloating it, yes, it is going to give you back some system resources. But again, people go too far with things and they remove way too much stuff and end up breaking the operating system uh, when they're using multiple different types of scripts to do certain things. And again, they can use, uh, you know, one of those uh, programs that actually completely removes modules from uh, Windows 11, which makes it super lightweight. And then they end up with a load of features not working properly and load of error codes coming up. I'm not so sure that is a good road to go down. I'd much more prefer that people would use, say, Windows 10 Lite or Windows 10 LTSC, which is going to be a super lightweight version of Windows 10, which has all of that bloat removed anyway, officially by Microsoft. That is probably the best way to go about it because that way you can still receive updates and, and everything is working the way it should be officially from Microsoft themselves. Again, I've made videos showing you how to make super lightweight operating systems before by removing certain features and they are functional and they still work and there's no error codes coming up. But again, that is not for the beginner user. That is for the more advanced or expert user. Anyway, we're going to run this script here and automate a bunch of things and I'll show you basically how that works. It's pretty straightforward stuff. As you can see me using it here while I'm waffling on. And that is basically how you can take back control of your privacy in Windows by using this is Win 11. It's a pretty useful little program if you're into this sort of stuff. And again, if you do want to de-bloat Windows, these sort of tools will do it exactly for you. And again, you will need that license key for the start all back. Again, it's not free, but it is only about five, five dollars or something like that. It's not a lot of money, but this is a must have for Windows 11. In my personal opinion, it makes using uh, Windows 11 a lot more easier and gives you your context menus and stuff like that. And just as it was on Windows 10. So if you are fortunate enough to be able to upgrade to Windows 11, definitely change that start menu. I just don't like the default one in there. It's one of the most annoying things I've seen with Windows 11. Now, let me know in the comments section below whether you're a Windows tweaker or not, whether you like to tweak Windows or whether you like to leave it just as it is as stock default settings or whether you prefer to go in manually and uh, turn off things yourself and uh, do tweaking that way. Let me know in the comment section. I'll be interested to read your comments. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. And also I want to say a special shout out to Ron Hicks, Casso Time, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, PC Repair Tech, Albert Hewson, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony One. I shall catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.